at its 130th annual general meeting in March 2016, the IFAB approved a two-year experiment to see if using Video Assistant Referees, or VARs, to correct clear errors in match-changing situations would benefit the game. The board also agreed on one protocol to be used throughout the tests. It was a historic day for IFAB and for FIFA with uh, crucial decisions, very important decisions being taken for the game with uh, the testing experimental phase for the video uh, assistance refereeing. In the following months, the IFAB and FIFA organized workshops and stakeholder meetings where representatives from over 20 countries learned about the requirements for participation in the experiment before deciding if they would take part. We have chosen Amsterdam as the host for the first workshop because the KNVB over the last couple of years has done some initial experimentation uh, and we felt it was just right to give them the opportunity to present their key findings as a basis for our debate. The second workshop was held in New York in July and focused on educating referees and VARs on the most important elements for the success of the experiment. The attendees experienced firsthand how the VAR system worked and how VARs and referees communicate with each other. Not clear enough for me, I'm going to stand with it. I think participants will leave this workshop with a very good idea of what needs to be done in the referee education, the challenges that lie ahead, but also the way in which they can educate their referees, get the systems working, get their protocols established so that the communication can be as efficient and accurate as possible. The meticulous education of the referees continued. A VAR training centre was established at the home of FIFA in Zurich in August, allowing FIFA to train match officials for their tournaments. As well as offering others a hands-on opportunity to see and experience just how VARs work. FIFA has decided to install a VAR training centre here to support the IFA with the development of the protocol that means to fine-tune uh, the review process but at the same time also to standardize the VAR equipment. For that we have two technology providers here. They showcase their technology and we hope with these results we can then go forward in the process. VR Center is very important to have here in the home of FIFA. As uh, every experiment uh, we are doing is crucial to test. As every training session, if you don't test, it would be very difficult to arrive then in an official game and to be ready on what we should do. In September and October, the training center was used for a seminar with the top FIFA referees and the third VAR workshop for all participating countries. We saw that the VR system can be very helpful to the referee and uh, sometimes in a match there is no situation and sometimes in a match there are three or four situations to help the referee or to confirm the referee. But this initial demonstration was only the beginning. Shifting from theory into practice, a series of more than 20 matches was organized under the supervision of the IFAB and FIFA. VARs were used live during competitive matches in the US and the Netherlands, as well as during two international friendlies in Italy to test and refine the VAR protocol before official trials began. I think it makes sense the technology to use because you can make no mistakes. You can take the time and then also correct the things. It makes the game fairer, it makes the situation fairer, as I said, when it's too much. I think that's a very big advantage for both teams. The most important trial was at the FIFA Club World Cup in Japan in December, where for the very first time an entire tournament was equipped to use VARs. Not only were some of the world's best referees able to experience the system firsthand, but FIFA's Football Technology Innovation Department was also able to analyse just how the best technological setup should look like in football. Here in Japan we've been working very hard with the referees, for some of them it's their first experience of video assistant refereeing. 
We've worked with them with on-field exercises, using clips, and in the communication between the referee and the video assistant referees. It's been an essential part of the work, and FIFA have helped very much lead this project by giving us the opportunity now to use it in a very important competition. Remember that the referee decision has to be the last. I saw big improvement in these days. So some of the referees, some of the VRs were really comfortable uh, at the last stage. It's been a fantastic experience to be part of this whole project. You know, there's been a lot of anticipation and a lot of build-up for the VAR project. So to be part of this tournament here and then to be part of the first game was is really exciting for me. Danny, Danny here, excellent performance, well done. Technology will not solve 100% refereeing problem. Mistake will remain because in football, in refereeing, we will always have case of interpretation. Okay, thank you. It's okay, penalty. The IFAB will decide in 2018 or 2019 how well the experiments have gone and whether this is something that we should incorporate into football. That decision will be taken based on all the evidence we receive and the views of the world of football. We started the experiment phase by saying we must examine video assistant refereeing to say will it benefit football. And that ultimately will be the question to which we'll say yes or no.